So I'm here with Carson Hessenthaler. He farms with his family outside of Byron. And I understand you're, you're experimenting a little bit with some cover crops and grazing. Will you tell me how it's been going? Yeah, the last couple of years we've been you know, experimenting with some dwarf Essex rape and purple top turnips and grazing them after and it's been working pretty well. Yeah. You know, if the season's long enough, like last year we had a great year for a cover crop. Yeah. It was you know, really warm, we got the barley off early and it worked out pretty well. What was your motivation to try something like that? I'm kind of biased a little bit. I like to hunt and the deer really like turnips and stuff like that. And so I was like, you know, maybe we could, you know, get that in and then, sure. and then the, you know, the deer can eat on it for a while. And then after that, the cows get it. So that's pretty it's kind of a dual benefit there. That's good. That's the first I've heard that one. I like that. <laughs> the first year, you know, we, I, it was kind of new into it and we tried um, kind of some hybrids and those did all right. And then I, the next year I was like, well, let's just try these purple top turnips. You know, the seed's really cheap. They worked out, you know, really well the next year. And I think my brothers were all right with it. It worked out well enough. And the cows Wasn't liked as it? Yeah, the cows liked it. The cows, you know, it took them a couple of days to find it. But I mean, after that, you'd walk through the field and sure. I mean, that seemed like the only thing they were eating was the, yeah. the turnips. You just see, you know, because they get about the size of a softball or baseball mm -hmm. and you'd see half of it eaten off and they'd be pawing at the ground trying to sure. get as much as they could. So when did you plant them that first year? Um, first part of August. Okay. I mean, Brandon was in the combine and mm -hmm. I was in the grain drill okay. just going right, right after as long as he sure. kept ahead of me, I was drilling. So you drilled no-tilled right into the barley? Y right? Yep, into the barley stubble. Okay. What point did you turn the cows out on the... We kind of waited a little longer than we probably should have. The barley was actually starting to tossle and okay. head out. Okay. So I'm going to say it was probably October. Okay. And how long were they out there? All winter long. October till probably April 1st, there was cows out there. They ate most of it in the first couple of months, and then we supplemented the okay. feed with, with hay and silage. Did you notice anything in particular in the soil in the next spring? You know, there was just a lot of residue, and the barley got a little, little coarse, and the cows didn't eat the barley as much. And so there's a lot more barley stubble than we're probably used to. What did you do after you took the cows off in April to get it ready for corn? Uh, we disc it and hit it with a roller harrow. You've adjusted your seeding mix a little bit from the first to the second year. Do you have any other thoughts on that in the coming years, what you'll try? Um, I really like the, the purple top turnips. I mean, they're really cheap. That's yeah. kind of what it really comes down to. You know, seeds less. You, you know, last year we came in and we actually put in, fertilized the field mm -hmm. to get maximum yield. So did you, did it bring the deer in like you'd hoped? Yeah, we had some guys hunting and they said, sitting in their tree stands and they said they watched deer all night just picking through the field, picking up the turnips and they were happy with it. That's great. <laughs> so previously you were, you were grazing your barley regrowth and then the added expense of the seed, the fertilizer and the time on the tractor to get the extra forage out of it has been worth it to you in terms of the amount of feed you've got for the cows? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Because your barley regrowth is just about free, really, almost. Mm -hmm. Other than the um, you know, irrigation costs. Yeah. And it's kind of hard just because there's so much residue left over. I think if we could guarantee the cows we're going to eat it all, it might be another thing. And plus, you know, just irrigating that again yeah. is kind of just turn a pivot on is really, really easy. So before you did this, were you grazing your barley stubble or your barley regrowth in the fall anyway? Yeah. Before that? Okay. Yeah. So before we were irrigating our barley and I thought, man, let's try this, you know, try something new and, yeah. you know, give the cows something else to eat on rather than... Did you purchase a no-till drill or did you use some equipment you already had? No, we just used our, you know, conventional drill and, you know, it works out pretty well because cover crop really doesn't need to be planted that deep. It's just really like an eighth, eighth to a quarter of an inch deep. You planted in August, put the cows on middle of October. When did you get your first killing frost on it? It was pretty late. That's another thing that's nice about the Brassica family is they're really cold tolerant and they can handle, you know, yeah. fr slight, like little freezes. They can handle temperatures down to their high 20s, can't mm -hmm. they? Yeah. Yeah, and actually it makes it more attractive to the, like, wildlife and oh, okay. cows because when it freezes, it does something with the, with the leaves and sweetens yeah. them up and makes them more attractive. Yeah. So it sounds like because the cows ate everything and it died over the winter, you didn't really have a weed issue as a result. Yeah, I didn't notice really any... Any weeds? I don't know. So following your cover crop, did you have to make any adjustments to the nutrient management on your corn crop? No, we just went to back to the same uh, fertilizer rates we used before. So if you were talking to somebody else who might want to try some cover crops and some grazing, do you have any advice for them? 
kind of plan ahead because it's really a busy time of year. You know, August, you know, we've got you know, barley, we've got, got to irrigate still, and yeah. just make sure you have enough time to, to set aside, have someone go plant that. They mature really fast, like they'll mature in like 60 to 70 days. So just make sure, you know, like if it's September in Wyoming, it's, you know, probably not going to get get big, you know, and they're probably not going to get baseball size. Just as long as it's early, I think you can do it.